Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So this video is aimed to help players who are at the level 85 to 90 range who want to convert to block-based. Don't mind the dog in the background. There are two key things we're going to talk about here. Number one, actually three key things. Number one, the respec. And by respec, I mean I'm just going to show you the nodes I need because you can just follow it in POB. Number two, we're going to talk about the shield that you need to get, how to buy it, how to craft it. And number three, a slight aura change that's in the POB to my actual character. It is cheaper, it does not need an enlighten, and we're gonna cover all this right now. So step one, I am buying Harvest Life Force at about 950 for 10 C. I'm doing this automatically through the exchange here. So you guys can also do the same thing. You can even get it for a little cheaper uh, depending on how long you wanna wait for it. Uh, this is going to be important for the reforged life that we're going to be doing on here. I do believe it's about 6,000 in average to get it, so it is a bit RNG. Step two, we want to buy a shield base. What I like to do personally, and it's kind of inefficient, but it makes it simple, is you'll see in my guides, they'll say use an armor base. And a lot of people say, well, what armor base? It's tricky to tell people what base because for new players, they're going to copy exactly. And the problem with copying exactly is you kind of get screwed over when it comes to the price of it. So if I go into POB and I just type in shield, you can see that starting from, uh, let's see, shield type armor, Pinnacle has the highest base armor, see 537, and rolls 20 to 30 life. Colossal has, sorry, Colossal has higher life, uh, higher armor, but a little bit less life. And Azamite has the most life, but the least armor. So all three of these technically are going to be fine, realistically. Even like if you go down a little bit more, they're still fine. So... When I go into Path of Exile and I search for something, right? So we're going to go Path of Exile Trade. We're going to go search Hilda Shaper, because this is Shaper Influence. We type in Colossal Tower Shield. These are about 60 Chaos, and Azamite is about 40 C. But realistically, the end result is about the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get one here. Oh, not that one. Let me refresh this because I have this tab open for a little. Oh, uh, that's kind of weird. I can't be on D and D at the same time. Uh, just poe things. This guy listed it a minute ago for twenty five C. Will he sell it to us? Let's see. No. Okay. Next guy. Forty C. Oh, item level is also a little bit important here. Uh, I think as long as you're getting above 84, you're fine, or 84 and up. Uh, the item level, technically, I don't think matters too much. It's just if you're going to invest currency into this anyway, you may as well, like, get a reasonable item level. Okay, so that is our base. Perfect. And now I'm just going to go on D&D here because we got what we wanted. All right, so... Now that we have our shield, it doesn't really matter if you quality now or if you quality later. I'm just going to quality now. And if you prefer, you could try searching for a shield with life recovery on block. I'm just going to be making one because I play a lot of SSF anyway, and this is how I'm going to go about SSFing. So now I'm going to do reforge life here until I hit a recovery mod on the suffix. So literally all I'm doing is looking where it says suffix and seeing if it says life recovery on block. Again, we might be here for a while because I believe the average is about 6,000. So let's, let's get to clicking. No, this is where that SpongeBob meme comes in of like, you know, eight hours later. Okay, got it. Recover on block. So this one actually has a T1 life roll with a really nice armor roll. And it has a suffix open and there's a cold res. So what I could do now, if I want to just go a little further, I can come over here. I can craft armor for 2C. This now has over 1.4K and that's even a low roll, right? I think that was a low roll. 250, that's a low roll. Let's just try it out. Boom. Did I get the same fucking number? Okay. All right, game. Okay, cool. I'll take it. All right. From here, because it has a suffix open, I'm actually going to exalt the suffix. And ideal suffixes would be like physical damage reduction, chaos, life regen, fire, cold, or lightning. We can't get cold here. Uh, gem reservation, reduce critical strike damage reduction. Uh, chance to chill, I don't think really matters for us. But now we have a block shield. Um, if you want to increase the implicit on the life, you can just use bless orbs to round that life up. And then if I were to use my awakened PoE trade, 
at like 1500 armor recover on block a lot of life and there is not maybe the right price but there's an example right that's easy money for example so i'll list that for like four and then we'll just lower that price over time now to talk about the auras let's get into this next part and what's required to be block based so here's what's required to be block based one two three four and five so when you're at this stage your auras are going to be purity of fire skitter bot and determination you're gonna drop determination for tempest shield and flesh and stone so an example of what this would look like okay let me pull out tempest shield and let me pull out my skitter bot so i am gonna really fast run term and this is my mono that's what it looks like uh you may even have it so you like you're skipping these two and you're right here just for like aura sake right we're gonna disable that and we're gonna put on tempest shield and skitter bot now to do this all you need to do is take this wheel here you actually don't even need this wheel but if you take this wheel then you can link unbound ailments to your skitter bot which increases the shock multiplier TLDR, more single target damage. Now, after you have your aura set up, let's look at my stats. I currently have a chance to block attack damage of 24%, and my spell block is zero. So, if I pick up a Tempest Shield from the vendor, right here, and I put it over my current Tempest Shield, and I activate this Tempest Shield, we go to spell block of 18 when I take Glancing Blows on the tree, we now have 36 Spell Block and 48 Attack Block. Coming down here, we're going to go on the left side of Wall of Steel. 3%, 3%, 10%. Also, Armor if we block recently. Our Attack Block is now capped. Take the Mastery for a 1% chance to block Spell Damage per Attack Block. You should now have around 66 Spell Block. When your Tempest Shield reaches close to max level, you will end up going spell block cap. Do you see there? So now you have spell block, block cap, shock immune, and you recover on block. When your recovery on block is set up correctly, implying that you are following my links basically, I can show you an example of the difference it makes when you are mapping. So I'm gonna go ahead and just jump into a real quick Alcan Go map. Let's see, do I have like a toxic sewer? Yes, I do. Let me just alk that bad boy. Okay, let's not do monster steel charges because that's going to make me look a lot less squish. Okay, crit multi and multi proj. That's like pretty spooky. Now, I can't turn on my RF here because if I turn on my RF, um, everything is going to just die. Oh my god, there's even wildwood. Holy. But here is an example of what it's going to look like. So when you are block and recovery, you will end up out mitigating the damage that monsters deal, turning that damage into healing. And a lot of people will basically say, well, why do you take glancing blows? I don't really understand. If I take glancing blows off, you'll actually notice I'm not as tanky here. Why? That's because I'm not blocking nearly as much and I can mitigate the damage so much, it literally turns into healing. This is why Glancing Blows is a very strong defensive layer, specifically when paired on builds with high mitigation and recovery. This creates a very nice defensive layer for your build, especially for builds that don't have the most damage right away because you end up taking more hits than normal. By utilizing this, you can be a lot more tanky at a reasonable level of investment, allowing you to get right on into map blasting so you can start generating more currency and being the tanky build that you've always wanted to be. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. I'll try to get a video out on RF gear progression, but I also need to get a video out on uh, basically my character progression. So there's a lot to cover, and uh, there's only been so much time. So I'm going to catch you guys all later. Thanks everyone so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow.